With Fire Emblem Three Houses' release date soon to be announced, we hope anyway. I thought it might be interesting to look back at some of the prior entries in the series to see what Three Houses should learn from its predecessors. Few gaming franchises have as much content, you know, over 29 years worth, as, as Fire Emblem, so it's only natural that it should have grown and developed over its long and storied history. So today, we're going to take a look at Fire Emblem Blazing Blade and decide what three houses should learn from it. Blazing Blade was the first Fire Emblem game to be released worldwide. It featured three main characters and an avatar. It shared three stories, though two of them were virtually the same, starring one of each of the main characters. This is a major thing Three Houses should learn from Blazing Blade. It would appear that Three Houses is going to have three important characters, being Adelgard, Dimitri, and Claude. It is most likely going to have an Avatar character in Byleth as well. Side note, it is important to remember that we don't know for sure if these assumptions are correct, but hopefully we'll know soon with some more news. Anyways, Blazing Blade handled these multiple main characters by making each of them the focus of their own story, though Elwood and Hector's story are largely the same. I hope that Three Houses learns from this idea and builds on it. I'm hoping to see the same situations from completely different points of view, similar to how Radiant Dawn Part 3 had moments where you would play as the Dayan Army, and then you would play as the Lugu's Alliance in a similar scenario. All of that to say, I really hope that Three Houses takes the multiple stories of Blazing Blade and actually makes them three separate and distinct tales revolving around the same conflict. Next, let's discuss the avatar of Blazing Blade, Mark. He is represented by a little green sprite on the map, and he never speaks. He is only spoken to. His purpose in the story is to serve as nothing more than to give a reason for the character in the story to speak directly to the player. He is literally an avatar. He has no impact on the story. He is simply an onlooker. Now, we do already know that Byleth will take part in battle, but he had no spoken dialogue in the trailer at all. Now, I understand that no one besides Adelgard had lines in the E3 trailer, but this could still mean that Three Houses is leaning back into this Blazing Blade style treatment for the avatar. While it is a matter of opinion whether or not Chris, Robin, or Corrin were good characters in their respective games, one thing is for sure. They were not true avatars. They had their own thoughts, lines of dialogue, and personality. Kind of. <laughs> I hope that Three Houses learns from Mark and his minimal impact on the story. As we have seen, a self-insert who plays a major role is often pandered to in a way that detracts from the story as a whole. So having Byleth simply be an army commander who is not playing much of a role in the overall plot would probably serve to give us a better story in the end. Next, let's take a look at the tutorial mode of Blazing Blade, which is called Lin Mode. There has been a lot of speculation revolving around the fact that Adelgard refers to a teacher, likely Byleth, in the E3 trailer. Some have speculated that the early game of Three Houses will take place in a war school of sorts. Could this mean that the early game will be a tutorial for newer players? If it is, I hope that Three Houses will learn from the mistake that is Lin Mode and make it a little less handholdy. If you've played through the 10 chapter slog that is Lin Mode, you understand what I mean. Unless you play on hard, the game takes time to teach you everything you need to know about the game, but it goes about it in a tedious way that slows progression. All I am saying here is that I hope Three Houses will attempt to make any tutorials it has quick and easy to understand, allowing the player to figure things out on their own. Now, let's have a look at Marcus. He joins in the first chapter of Ellawood mode and the second chapter of Hector mode. He begins the game as a promoted paladin and is the strongest unit in your army, so strong that he can solo maps with ease in the early game. For a unit as strong as Marcus to exist is fine in the early game. But the problem is, he never becomes bad. There are very few units who can catch up with him and those units require much more work than him to become that good. This is something that should not happen. It trivializes the game in many aspects and makes the player's actions seem less important. I propose that Three Houses learns from this and keeps any early game unit that is powerful out of the game. Or I would even be interested to see intelligent systems remove a powerful character like this in a harder difficulty. The last thing I'd like to tackle today is the promotion time of each main character in Blazing Blade. What I want Three Houses to learn is to simply give the player the opportunity to promote the main characters whenever they want. 
Now, I understand that this has been rectified recently with Awakening and Fates, but then Echoes was released, which had event-based promotion. Blazing Blade allows two of the main characters to be promoted earlier than one, who promotes just as the game is ending. I simply hope that Three Houses decides to allow the player to choose when the main characters promote. Well, there you have it, folks. Five things that Fire Emblem Three Houses needs to learn from Blazing Blade. What do you guys think Three Houses should learn from FE7? Let me know in the comments, and make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion.